Wing Chun is the art form of fighting, right? But it's the only art form where if you make a mistake, it can cost you your nose. It can cost you a rib. But how cool is it to have a business model where I will teach you to be an awesome fighter, so good yeah. that if you use your skill, you really could incapacitate your yes. opponent, yes. right? And it's so lethal that we can't use it on each other. <laughs> right? I can't demonstrate, you it. Can't, I can't okay, demonstrate no. it on you I because could. I could really yes. hurt you permanently. But buy my book. It's only thirty nine ninety five, and it's called Dim Muck. Right, and I would teach you the death touch. Yeah. I mean, come on, and that's and that's how kung fu schools sell their programs out there. And just something as simple as okay, we're going to be drilling, stopping a punch. All right, how far away are you standing from me? Yeah, are you punching with your thumb pointing up to the ceiling or to the side or down? Are you coming at me really straight or are you coming kind of like curved a little bit? Are you protecting your face? Are you standing square? I mean, all these different elements are so important when it comes to learning real martial arts. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Wing Chun by Design podcast. I believe today is episode 22. And once again, I'm joined by Stefan and Brendan. Hi, guys. How's, How's it going? Hi, Sifu. Uh, today, I want to piggyback on the episode, I believe it was episode 20, when we discussed Wing Chun Grandmasters. And um, I mentioned how our late Grandmaster Yip Man was not given the title of Style Keeper of the Wing Chun system. And uh, so I think it would be great to discuss the different Wing Chun styles that we have out there. Because nowadays you could say Wing Chun is the most popular Kung Fu system in the world, right? I think by far. Yeah. Then maybe Tai Chi and all the other styles. But uh, because of its popularity, thanks to Bruce Lee, Yip Man and the Yip Man franchise. I mean, before the Yip Man franchise, you would go to northern China and a lot of people wouldn't even know about Yip Man. Right. Since the movies came out there has been a massive boom in popularity, schools opening up, and that's a topic for another episode where people who are not qualified in mainland China are teaching the system. Right. And because people in the Western world think, well, I need to learn the real thing, I'm going to go back mm -hmm. to its origin or place of birth in China. And, that, and trust me, now you can find much better Wing Chun Sifus in Europe, here, America, and, and wherever. But anyway, today I'd like to talk about the different Wing Chun styles. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been, thanks to my Sifu, I've met many different Wing Chun uh, Sifus from mainland China, and you could call it like the old school, like the primitive Wing Chun and I have to say, in my encounters with these practitioners, those Wing Chun systems look very different yeah. to call it the Yip Man Wing Chun system that we know uh, nowadays and which is quite popular. And a lot of people are going back. They may have started in the Yip Man system, but then they go to... Fatsan or all these different places in China trying to search for these authentic, authentic the, origin, yeah. the original Wing Chun um, uh, masters and, and curriculum. And what I can say is those systems have not evolved yeah. much because they haven't been exposed as much as, call it the Yip Man Wing Chun system has, and especially us practitioners who live overseas and are exposed to all sorts of different combat sports and combat systems, yeah. those primitive Wing Chun schools are very much in the past, in my opinion. Right. Uh, I know people may disagree if they're you know, into it and practicing it, but let's talk about Wing Chun as a system compared to a style, all right? When you have a system in place, there are principles and there are theories and philosophy behind it. A style 
you and I can practice the same system and you can have your own little style of how to execute the movement or how mm -hmm. to practice it. And we have our little style within a system. Right. When you find people out there executing fundamentals very differently, then the application becomes so different that it's almost like black and white, where uh, if you're going to try and say, pull off a primitive Wing Chun technique and your Bong Sao back fist or Bong Sao Lap Sao movement is executed in a way where you can't really apply it, then what's the purpose of drilling that movement or yeah. of drilling that technique? Have you guys ever seen any of those videos online? Yeah, I have. I've seen a bit. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking, you know, we talk, you know, Bruce Lee talked about no fixed positions and uh -huh. how like a Quan Sao or a Gan Sao, there's a few different ways, there's a, many different ways to apply those. Yes. If you understand. Do you find the, the sort of the, the arts in China kind of are more fixed in the way they try to apply something? Or do they, can they employ those techniques in various ways? The thing is, my Sifu has said this in the past where culturally it's different. The, over there the mindset is Sifu says, student does. Right. No question. Yeah. And in the Western world, it's not that the student is questioning the Sifu, but that student may have some questions. How can I use it? Or what is this for? Mm. How can I apply it? Or see for I'm having a hard time doing this and what should I do next? Something like that. So it creates a conversation and in a way it challenges the Sifu to really explain and demonstrate and express why the technique should be done a certain way. Right. In China, for the most part, Sifu says he can kill you with one finger. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. It must be true. Right. And, and they leave it at that. And they accept that that's going to work. And they accept whatever the Sifu says as the ultimate truth. Right. And then nobody to question that. Yeah. And then unfortunately with that, it's almost like, how can I say this in a way where it doesn't come out harsh? It, it, it almost strips the ability for the system or for the student to really develop their own skill with what's being taught because <clears throat> if the Sifu is teaching you something and it's never been tested, right? right, Or you don't have the ability to test it and even if you did, and it, yeah. it doesn't work, but you still don't want to go against yes. your teacher. And yes. offend and, the Sifu. Yeah. And, the si and, and the school and everything. And that's why nowadays you see these so-called Wing Chun practitioners or Kung Fu in general, Tai Chi guys, getting beat up in 10 seconds yeah. in China with a very mediocre kickboxer. Right. It's not even a high level guy and there's no comparison. It, yeah. And it's because of that, yeah. right? Where they train, I mean, I've been exposed to guys where they've told me if they did the death touch on me, they would kill me. And I said, you know, well, let's do, let's, let's make a deal. You do your death touch on me. I won't move. I'll have my hands behind my back and I'll take it like a man. Mm. But once you do that on me, I'll give you my punch on your chest and you take that right. and don't move. And let's see which one hurts more. Yeah. Or which one does more damage. I just said which one hurts more because I know his hand won't do any damage <laughs> on me. <laughs> but I know my punch will hurt his chest. Right, so, so, and that's it. You know, on the, in the Western world, it's like, bang, bang, bang. Let's get into it. Yeah. Right? And if it's not working, you it's ask. It's not working. You're it? punching my face 10 times and I'm still not able to stop you. There must be something wrong here. Yeah. But you have to have that interaction. Yeah. That's right. Where mm. most old school traditional uh, you know, academies and schools in, in China, they don't do that. And, and the most type of applications they do, they're set choreographs right, i'll punch you with my right hand you punch i block 
You do this, I lift, I pull, I push, you yeah. do that, ba ba ba, one, two, three, done. Right. Excellent. All right, let's do it again. And then the closest thing that you'll see is let's do chi sao. Mm. All right, one, two, three, one, two, three, bo, oh, you, you slap me here, I slap you there, ba ba ba. But that's not real fighting. Mm. So, yeah. What about the the uh, the lineages coming out of Yip Man and their variety? Yep. And sort of, there's a why are they so varied and different in their execution? Like you see, they're doing the moves seem the same, but they apply it very differently. It just goes back to the same thing because the source of that information was only exposed to so much right. and their knowledge in terms of application is very limited. Yeah. So how can they practice, teach yep. is just based on their own experience and then that's how, you know, the next generation, the, the students that are in the school, they're exposed to that, they train a certain way Yes. and, and that's that. But... How cool is it to have a business model where I will teach you to be an awesome fighter, so good yeah. that if you use your skill, you really could incapacitate your yes. opponent, yes. right? And it's so lethal that we can't use it on each other. <laughs> right? I can't demonstrate you it. Can't, I can't okay, demonstrate no. it on you I because could. I could really yes. hurt you permanently, but... Buy my book. It's only thirty nine ninety five, and it's called Dim Muck, right? And I would teach you the death touch. Yeah. I mean, come on. And that's and that's how kung fu schools sell their programs out there. And that's how students build a false sense of confidence. Just yes. drilling, tip tap, this that. Oh, and this is where I'll go with my finger, and this and that. And but we don't really. And you meet someone really mean and really tough. Exactly. And you've seen it firsthand where you see people not in our school, but high level, right, years and years of training, and then they meet a person who has a bit of experience sparring or boxing or something, boom, they can't handle it. They don't know how to stop yeah. that boxer, that kickboxer, because they've never been exposed to the application of their techniques, whether it's Wing Chun, Hong Ga, Tai Chi, Taekwondo, any style. And we've talked about this before with the conceptual and the reality thing, like, you know that when you're in a real situation, the the collision, the impact, you have to be used to that. Like a lot of uh, these systems kind of like, it's very technical, very neat. This scenario is going to play out exactly like that. Are you, you know, when you punch someone, when you kick someone, it, how how does your body react after that impact? And how do you recover your position and exactly. continue? Your balance. Yes. How do you recover? How do you cover? How do you counterattack? Yeah. Right? Are you going to wait? Are you going to jam? Are you going to pull? Preemptive stances. All that comes with just experience doing that actual encounter. Yeah. You know, the sparring, the application. Just something as simple as, okay, we're going to be drilling, stopping a punch. All right. How far away are you standing from me? Yeah. Are you punching with your thumb pointing up to the ceiling or to the side or down? Are you coming at me really straight or are you coming kind of like curved a little bit? Are you protecting your face? Are you standing square? I mean, all these different elements are so important when it comes to learning real martial arts. Yeah. Okay. I always tell my students, Wing Chun is the art form of fighting, right? But it's the only art form where if you make a mistake, it can cost you your nose. It can cost you a rib. It's not like painting, music. You made a mistake, you fix it. You start all over again. And you're in an environment where you're in control. The art form of fighting, many times, you're not in control. You don't know who you're going to verse. You don't know when it's going to happen, how it's going to play out. So many uncertainties. The stress. Are you huffing and puffing or are you under control? Right, all these elements are so important when it comes to fighting. Yeah, and if you are not exposed to something at least similar to that in terms of the timing, the tempo, 
then you'll drown. You won't know what to do when the time comes and someone launches a real punch in your face. You won't be able to stop it and you'll collapse. Yeah. And unfortunately, people nowadays are teaching Wing Chun, are teaching martial arts, and that they themselves have not been exposed to that type of training. And I only feel for the students yeah. because we have a duty of care to make sure that the person learning has a chance, right? Has a real chance at protecting themselves if they ever need to. Hmm. Yeah. It's, the, it's like what you said. It's just, it's a great marketing scheme. Right? Yeah. Right? Like, you pay. You don't have just, to. Yeah. You don't have to. You, you don't even need to sweat. Yeah. The tech, yeah, the, the system's so good that you don't need to work hard. No, like, all you need to do is just train in front of the mirror. Yeah. Right? And just put your hands here, do this, do this, do that. And you'll be unbeatable. And you'll be unbeatable. And put a nasty face when you practice on the wooden dummy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for today's episode. Everyone watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment or a question. We can tackle it next uh, episode. I'd like to hear from you. And uh, once again, guys, Brendan, Stefan, thank you for joining me. Thanks, and, you. Uh, Thanks, you. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Okay, guys. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. That's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.